Welcome to Our College, Your Voices. I'm your host, Kara Monroe. We are pleased to continue bringing you each month's President's Update in your podcast feed as another way for you to connect with this important communication tool at Ivy Tech. As a reminder, if you're an Ivy Tech faculty or staff member, you will be able to see the slides and script from President's Updates in my IV, I'd encourage you to log in. That will be on the employee dashboard in those areas. If you have any question about the episode, please feel free to reach out. Good afternoon, and welcome to the November President's Update. Last week, our college's safety and security team successfully executed a full-scale active threat response exercise at our Valparaiso campus with many participating community organizations. The exercise involved a simulated active shooter incident and its resultant response from police, fire, and emergency responders. Over 60 of our college, faculty, employees, students, along with many volunteers from the various community organizations participated as role players and observers in the event. The exercise was a strong testament to the care, concern, and commitment our team has to the safety of our students, colleagues, and community. There is much preparation and follow-up required to make an exercise like this real and effective. We are confident the learnings from the drill will measurably increase our college and community's safety and preparedness. Thank you to our teams involved, especially John Barefoot, AVP of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness, the PSEP team statewide, Chancellor Oxo Sikoski, and the Valparaiso campus for hosting this event for the college. We do plan to make this an annual uh, drill of a various kind. Well, this week, important information from Jen Fisher, Assistant Vice President for Employee Re Benefits, was distributed regarding our annual open enrollment for the college's benefit program. Open enrollment began on October 30th and will close on Wednesday, November 13th. Open enrollment is an excellent opportunity to refamiliarize yourself with the benefit offerings provided by the college and to confirm or change your benefit selections for the upcoming year that begins January 1. For our adjunct faculty and part-time employees, this is your opportunity to review existing selections and or enroll in those voluntary benefit offerings available to you. If you are a full-time employee, we are excited to share with you that for the second year in a row, there will be no increase to the annual premiums for the medical, dental, and vision plans. Additionally, there are no plan design or vendor cha changes. So that's just a tremendous, tremendous uh, outcome for all of us. It's really incredible. And the credit goes to each of you as we do all we each can to remain healthy and to use our benefits effectively. And of course, great thanks to Jen Fisher, Jason Reeves, Chris Butler, Jamie Klaus, and Seth Anderson for their efforts to provide high value, affordable health benefits for the college. Now, please remember open enrollment is mandatory for full-time employees. This means you must confirm your benefits elections in IV benefits by the end of the day, Wednesday, November 13th. The college's benefit team works hard to ensure Ivy Tech is able to provide a rich program for you and your family. Check out the open enrollment website for detailed information on all of the benefit offerings. If you want to hear from Jen and Chris in person, listen to their recent episode on the college podcast, Our College, Your Voices. And as always, your statewide HR team is there to help. Please do not hesitate to reach out. One other item we would like to highlight is that in the first quarter of 2020, the college is partnering with BMI Audit Services to perform a dependent eligibility audit. A dependent audit allows the college to validate that dependents covered on the health plan are, in fact, uh, dependent eligible. Be on the lookout for more information on this during this open enrollment period. Now, I know we all appreciate the many benefits Ivy Tech offers employees. One benefit I am pleased to highlight is a policy change affecting our full-time benefits eligible support staff. At the October Executive Council meeting, our chancellors and president's cabinet approved the recommendation to increase the rate of vacation accrual and maximum vacation accrual of non-exempt employees to match those earned by administrative staff. 
through feedback received in the voice of the customer, some of you remember that from last year, and from our statewide human resources team, the policy differential in the rate of vacation accrual between our non-exempt and exempt staff seemed outdated. A subcommittee studied the issue and proposed the changes mentioned. The policy change aligns with the college's goal five strategies to be a great place to work. The changes were made effective, actually, as of Monday of this week, October 28th, and will be reflected on our November 22nd pay date. Please refer to details in the employee handbook or contact your HR team for further information. Well, congratulations to the team that worked on our library hub process, including those in the information gathering stage, those who worked out on the recommendations for future state and the implementation team. We know this is substantial work. The library hub worked through three major issues. They formalized the structure of the statewide library directors committee uh, into a library services council. They created five consolidated process teams, which will provide support to the libraries in areas such as assessment, uh, library systems maintenance, information literacy instruction, and online research, and implementing new processes and tools. Thank you again to the team, and congratulations on wrapping up this great hub project. Well, Ivy Tech faculty and staff have seen the challenges and the barriers that our single mothers face time and again. So many students have explained that being a single mom is both the reason they desire to come back to college and the reason they can't come back to college. Working with single mothers to complete their educational goals and move towards self-sufficiency is in direct support of goal one of our strategic plan, ensuring every student persists towards their educational objective. As part of our national grant through Education Design Lab and funded by ECMC Foundation, Ivy Tech employees and students from around the state are working with community partners to develop a solution to dramatically increase completion rates for single mom learners. The solution will be piloted on four campuses, Sellersburg, Muncie, Lafayette, and Indianapolis. Deshaun Burrell is the director of our Student Resource Center in Sellersburg and is one of our amazing team members on the Single Mom Success Committee. Welcome, Dr. Burrell. Thank you, Dr. Elsterman. On September 30th and October 1st, Ivy Tech had the opportunity to participate in a gallery walk and design session. The purpose of the gallery walk was to gain a better understanding of the student experience and to ensure we are thinking about the students' needs as we began designing solutions. To prepare for the gallery walk, we interviewed numerous students, faculty, and staff, which helped us understand the barriers, successes, and challenges, celebrations, and experiences of single mom learners. Did you know 89% of single mom learners have low incomes? Only 8% of single mom college learner graduate, learners graduate with an associate or bachelor's degree within six years of enrolling. Or did you know 70 hours, the average time a single mother learner spends each week on housework and childcare. Through my experience working with single mom learners on my campus in Sellersburg and participating in the statewide committee, I've learned so much about single mom learners. I personally was moved by what I read in the gallery walk because the stories and statistics shared really showed the strength of our single mom learners as well as their strong motivation to better the lives of their families and to be great role models for their children. For example, there was one very moving story from a faculty member who shared that at the end of the semester, a single mom student told him that she had been doing someone else's work in exchange for food for her children. Some of our single mom learners are dealing with so much. Yes, and through the gallery walk and our work on the Single Mom Success Committee, we've also learned that single mom learners have a tremendous lack of time. They usually have to work to provide for their families, plus take care of their children, plus class time, plus studying, plus helping their children with their schedules and their schoolwork. 
it's a lot. Plus, many of our single mom students also face the additional barriers like housing instability or food insecurity or health issues or lack of healthy supports. So many challenges. During the gallery walk, I was struck by one faculty member's observation that single moms are either the top students in their class or they stop out or drop out. It takes such a total commitment to complete. And too many students aren't able to put school first with all of that life and family challenges that they're facing. But fortunately, there is a lot that Ivy Tech can do to help these very motivated students succeed. That's right. And that's exactly why I'm excited about the work we're doing to help single mom learners succeed. As I mentioned earlier, we spent the last six months doing research. Mm -hmm. We're interviewing students, faculty, and staff at each of our pilot campuses, reviewing national data and research, and we're learning from national think tanks and meeting with student success personnel at other community colleges across the country. At the beginning of October, we transitioned to the next phase of our work, creating solutions to dramatically improve completion rates for single mom learners. We have created five possible solutions to help single mom learners achieve success. Over the next few months, we will be visiting the pilot campuses to get feedback on the solutions to ensure we are really meeting the needs of our students. We will be finalizing the design throughout the spring and plan to launch the ideas in Indianapolis, Lafayette, Muncie, and Sellersburg in fall of 2020. We look forward to continuing this work to dramatically improve the completion rates for single mom learners. Thank you, Dr. Burrell, and thanks to all those who are working on our single moms initiative. This is very important work, and I'm so excited to see what we will do and what we will learn as we make Ivy Tech ever more single parent friendly. Well, I'm excited to welcome Thomas Reby, who was named officially our CTO, Chief Technology Officer, earlier this year. As you may know, the education industry has seen a dramatic increase in cybersecurity attacks in the recent years, and here at Ivy Tech, we have been no exception. Thomas and the information security team have been working closely with college leadership to protect us, and I've asked him here today to provide an update on those efforts. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you, Dr. Epsterman, for the opportunity to speak about Ivy Tech's cybersecurity initiatives. Higher ed institutions are the third highest targeted industry. Financial aid, employee paychecks, mm -hmm. student records, and computing resources are just some of the reasons why higher education remains a popular target for attackers. In any given month, our security controls will block 22 to 25 million inbound network attacks, reject over 60 million malicious emails, and block access to over half a million malicious websites. In recent months, Ivy Tech has seen a sharp increase in complex fraud attempts. These threats typically manifests in the form of social engineering phishing emails, which attempt to exploit an institution's workforce or business processes. This is why we are diligent in providing our staff and faculty with sophisticated tools and training necessary to address these threats. According to a Verizon Investigations report, social engineering attacks accounted for 41% of all cybersecurity incidents and breaches in 2018. What you click matters. To combat these attacks, the college has implemented multi-factor authentication to protect access to our email systems, our VPN systems, and soon we'll be extending this level of protection to the MyIvy website. These tools and training are the first line of defense for the college. We are scheduled for another round of email training to begin this week. It is vital that we use this training opportunity to safeguard our students' data and college resources. So Thomas, I have taken the security training, including the most recent mobile devices training, and have found it to be very helpful. So what else are you and your team working on? This past year, the college signed a landmark contract agreement with Cisco Systems, a worldwide leader in cybersecurity that gives the college access to several new next generation cyber security products. OIT is hard at work implementing 
several of these new technologies, and more will be rolled out this spring. Most of these technologies should be invisible and won't add additional complexity like most security solutions do. So security measures do tend to make life a little more complicated. For instance, I now have to use Duo to check my email when I'm away from the office, but necessary. Yep. That's a perfect example. Duo isn't overly difficult to use, but does add an extra step. Ivy Tech tries very hard to implement security solutions that are as non-disruptive as possible. Cooperative engagement between our security team and college leadership has been essential to the security of the college. As one of the most connected colleges in the state of Indiana, having a robust security program is necessary to the defense of the college, our staff, and our students. Having an engaged leadership team is an asset. Ivy Tech is fortunate to have such a committed and supportive leadership team when it comes to cybersecurity. We are well prepared to defend against modern threats. And we are constantly evolving and educating to protect the college against these threats. Well, thank you for joining us here today, Thomas. We really appreciate the work that OIT is doing to protect the college. It's incredibly important, and I know I reflect all of our colleagues when I say thank you. Thank you, Sue. Well, we've made great progress on our Career Coaching and Employer Connections Initiative, or as we call the CCEC. I've invited Caroline Dowd Higgins, our new Vice President of the CCEC, to join us today to tell us a little bit more about her background and to provide an update on the project. So, Caroline, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Elsperin. I am delighted to be part of the Ivy Tech team, and it's a great honor to lead the new Career Coaching and Employer Connections venture. I've worked in the realm of higher education and career and professional development for almost 20 years. I've coached thousands of students and alumni and worked with employers to create opportunities that are mutually beneficial to connect individuals to careers so they can thrive. I am particularly excited about Ivy Tech's entrepreneurial approach to reinventing and designing a comprehensive career development experience that meets the needs of our students and aligns with the critical need for talent from employers in our state. The new CCEC venture will position Ivy Tech students to land high demand, high wage jobs that align with the workforce and needs right here in Indiana. We are building upon the existing career and workforce efforts in place at Ivy Tech and optimizing resources to empower our students and employers with the tools and the resources they need to be successful. Our model comes from a collaboration with Ascend Indiana to create a jointly crafted report that synthesized national and statewide research to deliver a roadmap map for this venture. Now, like any entrepreneurial undertaking, we will prototype, we will test, and we will iterate along the way to continuously improve the process and the experience for our students and our employers, as well as all the Ivy Tech staff working on the CCEC effort statewide. So to begin, we have six alpha campuses participating in the first phase of the CCEC rollout. Sellersburg, Madison, Indianapolis, Kokomo, Fort Wayne, and South Bend. I'm impressed with their enthusiasm and their open-mindedness as we dive into this unchartered territory together. And I've promised them that we will fail forward together through obstacles, practice our resiliency, and celebrate our wins together. And I'm truly grateful for their all-in mindset and their enthusiasm. The incremental timeline for all campuses to become fully integrated into the CCEC venture will happen over a four-year period. I truly believe that CCEC will be a game changer for Ivy Tech. This is a national model, and our colleagues will have a chance to lead the way in this important work and distinguish themselves in the career development and workforce arena. 
we are sending a message to prospective Ivy Tech students that we will coach you through the career development process and teach you how to use a toolbox of resources that will empower you throughout your lifelong career journey. We aim to help students build social capital. This is a key driver for success in the construct that we developed. Many of our Ivy Tech students don't yet have the social capital or network that other college and university students have. And this social network will empower them to be competitive in the employment marketplace. We've also designed a career action plan that will put benchmarks and progress checks in place every 15 credit hours so students can see their success. Every student will engage in work and learn experiences to make wiser choices about what career opportunities match their unique skills, strengths, and interests. And our employers are hungry for more work and learn opportunities because this increases retention for their new employees and leads to longer term sustainability in the workplace. We're partnering across the state with employers to assist with designing or expanding work and learn experiences. We will create and steward career and technical education pathways and explore a myriad of new career opportunities that meet the demands of employers of all sizes in our state with a focus on the high growth employment areas with immediate needs for our talent. Now, I'm really excited because we believe that CCEC aligns very well with Ivy Tech's strategic plan goals. So let me share just a few. Goal one of student success. We're going to be providing students with lifelong career and professional development tools they can use. Goal two, recruitment and enrollment. We're going to help our prospective students understand that we will be with them every step of the way on this career journey. Goal three, completion. We are going to be a partner in attaining the 50,000 50, credentials annually with a focus on high demand and high earning careers. And of course, goal four, workforce. We are committed to the career development and employment of our students. When our students complete their degrees or certificate programs and land careers that engage them and afford them the opportunity to create a livelihood, we build stronger communities. I believe CCEC can also steward our Ivy Tech alumni so they can participate in this venture by serving as mentors and role models to our current students. I really want our alumni to hire our current students and provide work and learn experiences and stay engaged with the college well after they leave our campuses. CCEC is creating a culture and a student and employer experience that will distinguish Ivy Tech nationally. This endeavor will be a differentiator in our state by connecting Ivy Tech talent to the critical needs of our workforce. It will bridge social inequities and positively impact the economy in Indiana. These are exciting times at Ivy Tech, Dr. Elsperman, and I am honored to be a part of the CCEC movement. Well Caroline, welcome aboard. Thank We're you. so glad to have you here. And we recognize, though you described it well, it will be a heavy lift for you, the Alpha campuses, to work through and launch the CCEC. So we're looking forward to hearing updates regularly. So you'll Thank be you. welcome back. Thank you. Well, one of our largest and fastest growing fundraising initiatives at Ivy Tech is our Women in Philanthropy program called Circle of Ivy. Uh, I am just passionate about this initiative and the impact it's having on our students and our programs, so much so that I have recruited my own family members to be part of the Circle of Ivy. And I've asked Annette Flickinger to join us, the Assistant Vice President of Development Operations at Ivy Tech Foundation. She's going to talk about the initiative and provide us with an update. So, Annette, welcome. Yes, thank you, Dr. Elserman. We are very proud of the growth of philanthropy experience through Ivy Tech's Foundation's Circle of Ivy Initiative. 
It was created in 2015 to bring women together throughout the state to collectively raise funds to diminish barriers our students face at Ivy Tech every day. Circle of Ivy focuses on awarding project grants locally at each of the campuses to impact a number of areas, such as scholarships, providing students professional workshops, service trips, study abroad experiences, as well as providing necessary instructional materials, textbooks, and classroom technology, providing students with emergency needs, aiding students with wraparound services, such as food pantries, or eye care and eyeglasses, and creating a lending library, to name just a few. Circle of Ivy raises its funds through its annual memberships. At a variety of levels, you can join Circle of Ivy, $15 as a student, $25 for alumni, and then on levels of $100 on up. When we first launched Circle of Ivy, we had a little over 100 members. And then in just a few short years, just four, we have grown to over 755 members that have collectively have raised almost a half wow. a million dollars. And of those 755 members, 140 are our very own alumni members, 82 are our students, and we've had 424 new members. Those 424 new members wouldn't have been possible without all of the hard work at our campuses and all of our members asking new members to join the circle. During late summer, employees are, have the opportunity to submit project proposals for Circle of Ivy funding consideration at your local campus. Circle of Ivy members vote on which projects they would like to fund, and the grants are announced at the annual fall luncheon. In just a few weeks ago, we celebrated at our annual fall luncheon with over 300 women. We celebrated all of the impact each of the circles have had and announced the project funding, which represented over $146,000 to 61 projects. If you haven't ever submitted a proposal before, I would encourage you to do so. As our membership keeps growing, as you can see, so does the dollars that we are able to reward out each year. I would also encourage you to be a Circle of Ivy member. Male and female alike, you can gift a membership to your granddaughter, niece, neighbor, mother, friend, or even a fellow colleague. And remember, it can be anybody of any age. Our youngest member is six years old. To learn more about Circle of Ivy, you can visit ivytech.edu backslash Circle of Ivy, or you can meet with your local development team. I also wanted to take a minute to let you know about a great giving opportunity coming up on Tuesday, December 3rd, called Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is a global day of giving celebrated the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Thousands of nonprofits across the United States raise money for their organizations on this day, and Ivy Tech will be participating for its third year. What is great about this year's Giving Tuesday is that we have two incredible donors who have come forward with a matching gift of $100,000 for that day. So each of our 18 campuses will have a specific project that they're raising money for. And all of the donations given to those projects on that day, Tuesday, on Tuesday, December 3rd, will be matched dollar for dollar up until the $100,000 has been reached. So be on the lookout this month for more information provided at your local campus on your local project and this great giving opportunity. I hope you will join me December 3rd and double your impact of your gifts. Thank you so much, Annette. It is exciting to think that we could raise $200,000 on that one day of giving, Tuesday, December 3rd. Okay. Well, I am honored to be able to share with you the generous donors are our very own Foundation Board of Directors, Gene Zink and his wife, Mary Ann. Gene and Mary Ann truly believe in the impact of giving to Ivy Tech through the foundation and what a difference we make with our communities. And I personally know they are excited to see how many of you will join us in this global day of giving. Well, in alignment with Ivy Tech's mission, we're committed to ensuring employers have the skilled workforce they need and Hoosiers have prosperous careers all across Indiana.
This is important because we live in an ever more technology rich world. We need the skills to run, repair, and design new technologies. And truly, all those leaving high school today need to have some kind of post secondary credential. And our working adults need the same. So many, especially those living in rural communities, know that there is a growing nationwide shortage of volunteer firefighters. And that shortage is playing out across Indiana as well, especially in our rural communities. I grew up in a small town of 2200 in Ferdinand, where my own son-in-law serves as a volunteer firefighter. There are ever fewer volunteer firefighters and public safety individuals available to support these efforts. You know, in the past, we were agriculturally based, and we had farmers who could serve in that role. Today, with high tech, there's ever fewer farmers, and many of those have full-time jobs. Our smaller communities and local industry cannot survive without these important public servants. IV Tech understands we are integral to the communities we serve, and as Indiana's community college, are compelled to help. We call it putting more community in community college, right? Uh, that's why we got on board when Representative Randy Fry approached Ivy Tech with an idea. He authored House Bill 1064 to establish the Ivy Tech Scholarship Fund that would allow volunteer firefighters to attend any program at Ivy Tech for free. He saw this as the GI Bill for public safety, a way to recruit and retain individuals to serve as volunteers by showing our state's appreciation for their work while at the same time allowing them to skill up to fill important jobs in their community, which would help them to stay in their community and strengthen the talent pool in our many small towns. There are great opportunities in our smaller communities, but attracting talent is tough for smaller employers. While the funding to make community college free for firefighters did not make it through our state's budget this year, we at Ivy Tech stepped forward to turn Representative Fry's idea into reality. We are committing, committed to providing $250,000 over the next two years to pay the tuition and fees of active volunteer firefighters. It will help eligible volunteers attend most of our academic programs and earn a certificate or degree. Mary Jane Michaelak, okay, let me try that again. Mary Jane Michaelak, <laughs> Vice President of Government Relations, is here to tell us more about it. Mary Jane, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dr. Elsperman. I get that a lot. <laughs> As you indicated, Representative Fry's bill did not get included in the state budget, but we do hope that piloting this scholarship over the next two years will give potential funders the information and inspiration to continue to fund a statewide program beyond the next two years. Representative Fry plans to go back to the legislature in 2021 and ask for state support. In the meantime, here is how it will work. Any individual in any program at Ivy Tech, except for general studies, will be eligible as long as they are an active volunteer or EMS personnel. The funds will be available starting in January, so for the spring semester. The funding will include regular tuition and the technology fees. Additional fees, such as those fees for the flight program or for books, are not covered by the scholarship. The student must enroll as a degree-seeking student. They can be an existing Ivy Tech student or a new enrollee. If they're not a current student, the student must apply to Ivy Tech and follow the enrollment process. The student should advise their local registrar's office of the potential eligibility, and the student must provide documentation to the registrar's office prior to receiving their first award. In addition, they must provide documentation for each semester thereafter. All students seeking funds will need to apply for federal and state financial aid using the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA, and the scholarship will be applied to students' accounts after all other state and federal aid is applicable. Students can attend full-time or part-time, and there are no minimum or maximum credit hour requirements. The biggest caveat to this scholarship is that the funds are limited. Once they're gone, they're gone. That's why our foundation is seeking donations from communities to help support this initiative. 
and why in 2021, Representative Fry will again ask the state legislature to include funding in the budget. If you are inclined to make a donation, please reach out to your local foundation representative, or you can help by telling individuals you know about this opportunity. Remember, the goal is to retain, recruit, and train individuals, especially in rural communities, to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jane. Just last week, I was in Lawrenceburg, along with Representative Fry, to announce the scholarship opportunity. In fact, we signed up the first two uh, students for that program, and we want to continue to spread the good word. Well, as many of you have already heard, Ivy Tech will be helping many of our former students make a fresh start with the college this spring through an initiative brought to us by the Fort Wayne campus. And I have asked Chancellor Jerry Mosier and Val Eakins, Executive Director of Administration, to provide us with an update. Jerry, Val, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Elsperman. Like many of the campuses across the state, the Fort Wayne Warsaw campus has been active in the development of our strategic enrollment management plan. This past spring, the leadership team from our campus participated in a Noel Levitt strategic enrollment planning meeting, which provided the foundation for the development of campus-focused initiatives led by cross-functional teams in six areas. Since that time, our Finance and Financial Aid SIM Committee has been working on an institutional debt forgiveness initiative, similar to one used at Wayne State University, which was highlighted by the Lumina Foundation. After our SIM team developed their initial plan, we invited President Elsperman to participate on a call with Wayne State University to hear more about their program and its implementation. We discussed Fort Wayne's debt forgiveness plan to provide adult students with an opportunity to return to Ivy Tech to complete their credential. And the rest, as they say, is history. Fresh Start 2020 was born. The president was excited about this initiative and she generously pledged $1 million to support a statewide rollout of the program for the spring semester of 2020. Since mid-August, the Fort Wayne SIM Committee has grown to a cross-functional team of more than 25 individuals statewide. Fresh Start 2020 is scheduled to roll out the first week of November. In fact, today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Val Eakins, co-chair of the SIM Finance Committee, will review the highlights of the program for you. But before I turn it over to Val, I want to publicly thank her for her time, her effort, and her expertise that she has dedicated to this program over the last several months. Well, let me second that thank you. Thank you, Val. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Bozier. There are over 17,000 students eligible for Fresh Start 2020. Eligible students are those who are not currently attending Ivy Tech and are unable to re-enroll in classes because of debt to the college accrued between summer of 2008 and summer of 2017. All eligible students must have a cumulative GPA of 1.8 or above. In preparation for Fresh Start in the Fresh Start initiative, a fresh attribute has been added to all eligible student records. Eligible students have been divided into three groups each with differing forgiveness options and communications plans. The first group of 4,360 students owe a balance of $50 or less. These students will have their debt automatically forgiven, their holds removed, and if applicable, they will have their accounts recalled from collections. The Debt Collections Hub will be doing the work to forgive the debt on this group of students. These students will be eligible to re-enroll at Ivy Tech and will have access to their transcripts without any additional conditions. The second group of 12,130 students owe more than $50 and up to $1,500 in debt. We will forgive the full amount of this debt over a maximum of three semesters, provided the students meet the forgiveness requirements. The final group of 648 students owe more than $1,500 
and are at least an estimated 75% on their way to a credential completion. Fresh Start 2020 can forgive $1,500 of their debt, but the student will need to make other arrangements to cover any remaining balance. Starting November 4th, Systems Office Marketing will be reaching out to all eligible student groups, directing them to a Qualtrics form to collect information from interested students. The fully detailed communications plan, process maps, process narrative, and lists of eligible student data have been sent to campuses. Campuses are encouraged to supplement statewide communications by reaching out to their eligible students. Once eligibility is verified, students will sign a Fresh Start 2020 agreement. Students must meet with an advisor to create a debt forgiveness success plan and to determine their quickest path to a credential or a program completion. Students must enroll in a minimum of six credit hours each semester according to their success plan. Students must have a means to pay their current semester tuition and fees. Upon su successful completion of the semester, one third of their debt, up to $500, will be forgiven, provided the student completes a minimum of six credit hours, earns a 2.5 or better semester GPA, maintains a 60% or 67% rate of completion, and has no outstanding current term charges. If the student achieves a completion prior to the successful completion of three semesters, the remainder of their debt will be forgiven upon that completion. We can't forget about that million dollars. <laughs> Each semester, Systems Office Finance will report waiver expenses and reimburse campuses from the million dollar fund. They will also monitor and ensure campuses are informed of the status of remaining funds. Currently, Fresh Start 2020 focuses only on students re-enrolling in the spring semester 2020, with forgiveness spread over a maximum of three semesters. It would be tremendous if we could re-engage with enough of these students this spring to fully commit the million dollars. Truly, the overarching goal of this initiative is not just to generate enrollment, but also to see these students through to a completion. We all know that sometimes life just happens to our students. They stop attending and end up owing the college money. This program gives these students a second chance. Indeed, it gives them an opportunity for a fresh start. Well, I want to say the sincerest thank you, Val, Jerilee, for your leadership in bringing this program forward and what you've done to continue to stand it up. Thank you for your efforts. And we look forward to seeing how our students can return and earn a credential that they can do something with and move forward with their fresh start. So thank you so much. Before we come to a close today, I wanted to share more information about our newest leadership development program, Pathways to Peak Leadership. The program was developed after evaluation of the college's current uh, and future talent needs. The talent development team identified a number of key factors that led them to believe that they needed to consider a new program for our senior level and executive level leaders. Some of these factors were the rapid change within the college, the college's talent needs changing at an ever-increasing speed, the ability to provide timely leadership development, to be able to increase experiential opportunities for participants and the competing demands on times of all of our participants. Based on those factors, Pathways to Peak Leadership was created to replace Leadership Institute and Executive Leadership Cohort. The new program offers a more personalized and streamlined approach to professional development for our faculty and staff and is more responsive to the changing needs within the college. Some of the critical elements of the program include a 360-degree uh, assessment up front, orientation to provide a program overview and introduce cohort members to one another, the talent development team, and their leadership coach, one-on-one -on -one leadership coaching, a creation of an IDP or individual development plan based on that 360-degree assessment, the leadership competencies of the college and their career interests, participation in workshops, 
customized learning experience, such as working with a mentor, completing a mock interview, or working on a project. And lastly, various touch points throughout the program, which are designed to increase accountability, build relationships with the cohort members, and to receive communications from the talent development team. Applications for Pathways to Peak Leadership are now available. To be considered for Cohort 1, applications must be completed by January 27, 2020. The Talent Development and Assessment Council will review the applications and identify the finalists for Cohort 1 shortly thereafter. To learn more, visit the Talent Development website or feel free again to reach out to the Talent Development team. Don't forget to follow the talent development team on LinkedIn to keep up to date on all of the things happening in their programs. So now, as we come to an end, mark your calendars for our next president's update on Friday, December 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, hard to believe, but we are now in the holiday season. It's just right here. So let me wish you now a happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and we thank you so much for joining us today. I am your host, Kara Monroe. You can connect with me on Twitter at KNM Tweets. You can reach us by email at our college or voices at ivytech.edu with show ideas or comments about any episode. Don't forget, you can always leave us a voicemail at 317 572 5049. Again, that number is 317 317- 572-5049. Our website is ivytech.edu forward slash podcast. Production assistance for this and every episode provided by Becky Campbell, Sarah Ferguson, and the Ivy Tech Community College Marketing Team. And our podcast concept is by Matthew Pittman. Theme music, recording, and post-production services provided by the amazing Jen Eads at the Brassy Broadcasting Company. And we will talk to you next time on Our College, Your Voices.